Hello, everybody, and you're very welcome to another episode on the Empowering Family Health podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, and her name is Adeline Galligan. <laughs> Did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Adeline, Adeline is here. She is a water expert and hydration expert. Now, water is essential for life. So, this conversation is going to be packed with information about water, why water is so important for our health, all the benefits of water, what to look out for, what not to do with water. So we're going to be discussing all of that and more on this episode. So stay tuned because it is a really, really important uh, factor for everybody to be aware of. So Adeline, you're very welcome to the program. Thank you, Joanne. It's great to be here. It's great to be Brilliant. here. Um, I've been following you for ages, actually, in your sleeping, because I think water and sleep are actually two huge things in my world. So yeah, yeah. So sleep is essential for life and water is essential water. for life as well. Absolutely. Yeah, powerful, powerful combination. Yeah. So tell us, Adeline, what got you involved in the whole area of water and um, hydration expert? Why? Why is that of value to you? And what is it that you're sharing with your clients, uh, you know, in relation to educating them about the importance of water? Why, why is this important to you? Uh, well, it's important to me for a number of reasons, actually. And it's, um, I suppose it's been my whole life. Uh, we had a family run water filtration company that I actually ran for 18 years up until uh, four years ago. Um, and it was very much focused on water filtration and water pumps and sewage treatment systems. So I've always been involved in water. Um, I'm a Pisces, so I'm a water sign as well. Uh, yeah, so it's just always, water's always been there. It's just, I love being by the water. I mean, I that's my happy place is by the sea and just breathing in the ions. Water has just been my life. And that's, and I suppose in the last four to five years, um, it's moved, I suppose, d deeper into you know the you know hydration and health and well-being versus just cleaning or filtering your water so it's just kind of taken a deeper into a deeper level now so i'm very much i suppose about healing water and healing wow so you really get and appreciate the power of yeah. water and the benefits of water so adeline so most of us are actually dehydrated believe it or not and um, most of us are and um, some of us more severely than than others what is the important what what how does water benefit us tell us a few things um you know and, I, and i'm sure there's tons of things but tell us a few really important ones that we really need to watch out for what, what why water is so important to our health um i suppose one thing i'm really big on is keeping things simple you know i think there's so much information out there we're living in a time right now that we have never been as unhealthy as we've ever in the history of mankind but mm. yet more information at our fingertips Mm. as to how to stay healthy so my theory is people are confused so i love simple 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 and keeping mm. it simple so obviously getting a good night's sleep for me is actually one of the most basic things we need to do and be getting right after that it's actually water water is the foundation of who we are we are beings of water 70 to 80 percent water yeah. every single one of our major organs and components from, from our blood to our skin to our lungs to our brain to our you know kit, everything is made up of between 70 and 90 percent water so one, being properly hydrated is massively important. And then being, you know, hydrated with the right water, we'll talk on that later, is massively important as well. Um, I actually made a list because, you know, people kind of, they glass over hydration really, but we're all, as you say, most people are walking around dehydrated. Yep. If you got into hospital for any reason, dehydration's assumed. You put on a drip before they'll even almost assess you. So we're almost assumed dehydrated. And most people think that they have to be thirsty in order to hydrate and that's actually really big if you're thirsty you're actually gone too far you should just be hydrating regularly but i actually made the list because i didn't want to leave out anything it's about 15 mm. things that are really impacted and i'll just fly through them then if you mm. want to pick up on any one brilliant uh, brilliant uh, brilliant shoot away what it affects your kidneys muscle cramps skin damage your pulse increases you eat more your mood i don't talk to you about the mood especially if you've got teenagers in the house uh hydrate. i get it i get it You'll see the mood change. Headaches, swelling of your legs and your feet and your ankles, um, fatigue, tiredness, just loss of energy, um, high cholesterol, poor digestion, constipation, premature aging, uh, bad breath, and it restricts your airways. So that's pretty much all it affects, which is That's pretty, all. That's all there is. <laughs> all. <laughs> that's all it affects. You talked about um fatigue there. Mm. Can we go a little bit into that? How how does lack of water what's what's going on internally in the body that when we don't have enough water we're feeling tired how, how is how is hydration impacting our energy levels it's huge literally a five percent 
loss of body fluids causes a 30% decrease in energy. Oh my God. So that's huge. So if you're going around tired and lethargic, especially in the afternoon, and what most people do, they reach for the sugar and the coffee, you know, yeah. to get the boost and things. They actually do not, if they actually reach for water and properly hydrated, you would just get your energy levels up. Um, there's lots of scientific evidence behind that. Uh, you know, I would, I'd, I'd encourage everybody, rather than going too deep into that, if they want to look at maybe more of that, why go and do some research on it? It's huge. But mm -hmm. literally, to keep it simple again, as I always say, 5% loss of um, body fluids, 30% loss of energy. So if you think, if you're anyways active, especially athletes, I mean, mm -hmm. athletes not being properly hydrated dramatically reduces their performance. Dramatically, yeah. actually, mm -hmm. bigger than they realize um, their performance. And then just, again, kids running around outside, you know, um, just playing football, playing with their friends. They're losing body fluid. Yeah, yeah. If they're hydrated then, they'll be, well, then that goes back into mood as well. But, you know, it's, it's, it's huge how it affects your energy. I find, personally, if I'm going to seminars or talks or um, if I'm studying or anything like that, I... At those times, I need more water and um, because I know the brain uh, essentially needs water and that takes precedence over the rest of the body and um, because the brain as well has us function and all the rest. So um, so I find that water, I absolutely need water, especially when I'm doing all the Zoom meetings and Zoom yeah. meetings nowadays, um, that you really need to keep the water uh, to keep keep the brain focused on the concentration. To keep alert because your brain is actually 80 percent water. Wow. If you're dehydrated, um, like your concentration is gone. You've got, you people talk about that fog that they get. Mm. That's dehydration. That's, that's what that is. Hydrate properly, fog lifts. Hydrate properly, energy rises. Um, but for concentration is massive. Yes. Yeah. The kids, actually, I don't know. We've got so many problems now with, um, or cases of autism, ADD, Asperger's actually addressing hydration and there's a fantastic lady if anybody wants to make a note of this a dr karina allen dr karina allen okay, okay. Keep your brain on water she's a she's a, a brain injury trauma specialist and she's all about water on the brain it's phenomenal right i must so check it i've never heard yeah no, it's mind blowing actually it's mind-blowing yeah wow okay so so water is um it's crucial in cleaning out our body um so obviously when we drink, the more water we drink, the more we go to the bathroom, the more we're going to the toilet. And um, so people generally stop drinking a lot of water close to bedtime because they don't want to be getting up in the middle of the night going to the toilet and that. Um, so it is a big part of cleaning out the body, cleansing the body, the kidneys, the bowels, help the digestion, all that as well. Um, but, but, but a really important thing in our lifestyle at the moment is there's so many toxins Mm -hmm. in our environment so between the foods that we eat with all the pesticides and herbicides the the air we're breathing in the sprays that we're spraying around the house um you know some so many things that we're eating think and drink and even our thoughts create yeah, toxins yeah. in our body so water is a crucial element in flushing out all those toxins because we're causing a lot of work on our liver and our kidneys when we're not helping that process by you know when we're not drinking the water it's putting more pressure on the kidneys and the and the liver yeah. so and that impacts sleep at night time as well so what is it about this um can you tell us or tell us a little bit more as to why you know and i don't like using the word detox because it sounds very um people kind of go oh and um, people want to enjoy their food as well and, and i have a slice of cake now and again or a burger now and again right but it's important now and again, to, now and again. <laughs> so it's important to to be aware and to eat healthy but it's also important to help the body flush out and i suppose even the more active we are that's any anything we do um any kind of cellular activity is creating a byproduct a waste product of some sort of description right so it's really important that uh, we are enabling the body to relieve itself of all these toxins. Uh, and this is all natural, you know, and inflammation and all that. Can you tell us a little bit more, um, or, um, you know, to... It's actually my favourite area of it, to be honest with you, is, and again, and as you say, the word detox, a lot of people go, oh, they nearly switch yeah. off with the word detox, but we have to detox. Yeah. I just say our body is the most amazing filtering and buffering system on the planet. It just is amazing. Like, what it deals with every day. If you were to stop and think what your body has to deal with every single day. And we're not that nice to our bodies a lot of the time, but it really is. And it, it, it's the most amazing filtering and buffering system in the world. But the, but the reality is, like you said, we're giving it way too much work to do. 
yeah we're this system under ridiculous pressure um we're given it so many chemicals and has so much to filter and buffer and balance out because of what we're doing so if you can reduce the chemical load on your body simple little tips like i always say to people just go kind of chemical free as much as you can in your home watch out for the scented candles and the, mm. the, the air wicks or these things that you plug in or the air freshener all these things are adding to the chemical load in your body and ultimately what's happening is we're just holding on to too much waste yeah. One, our body doesn't recognize what all this is and again it's been simple i love simple we're just holding on to waste. Our body cannot eliminate all that we're putting in there. So mm. one, you reduce the amount of chemicals, and then two, when you're properly hydrated, you're going to help your body actually eliminate the waste. That's ultimately what people call it, detox. I like to call it, call it just waste elimination. That's what we are. We need to get the waste yeah. out because we're yeah. holding on to it. And then when you hold on to it, then it causes you to get sick. So when you're dehydrated and you're holding on to too much waste, then you be, your body becomes overly acidic, it becomes infl inflamed. Yeah, then, talking about acidic, yeah. But then it oxidizes too fast. So we're dehydrated, overly acidic, inflamed, and then that speeds up the aging process in our body, <sighs> on the inside. So we're aging too fast on the inside, all because we're not cleaning ourselves out and we're just having our chemical load is too high and our body is just working way too hard. Respecting yeah. our body, that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's it. It's a little bit of self-care to think, hmm, you know, that's really God. simple change that you can do to properly hydrate. It has a massive impact on your, on your health. And we're eating an awful lot of acidic foods as well, uh, like, you know, sugary foods. And yeah. you know, there's a lot of stress in the world at the moment. And, um, you know, when we have stress, you know, there's a lot of comfort eating and that's when we're eating all the wrong foods. And that's adding to our toxic load as well. It's more yeah. sugar, it's more acidic. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're drinking water, it can help to, to flush all this out. Um, and, and alkaline, so our internal body is more alkaline. That's the preferred state. And actually, um, when we have a more alkaline system, there is a less opportunity for disease to manifest in the body, if you like. Um, so we do prefer more kind of an alkaline. So eating less junk, less sugar, all that, you know, being aware of all that stress that's going on in the world. And look, we, we experience stress all the time, every day. You know, it's, it's just been mindful of that and been aware that if we drink water and there's other things that we can do as well, but water can help to flush out and detox the body, which is ultimately what we have to be doing every day, every single day, because our body is producing all this waste, as you say. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about um, the blood. There's a lot of people who have high blood pressure mm -hmm. and, um, you know, th their blood is, is uh, very thick and, uh, you know, there's a lot of this fast uh, going around in the in the blood and all this kind of thing. So without getting to it, there's a lot of heart disease. Heart disease is a big killer at the moment. It's it's probably the number one killer in the world. Heart disease. So, um, this is down to again the blood and not having the blood at a right consistency. So what what is it about blood pressure and the blood? How how does water help in in, in that area? It's just really simple. When you don't have enough water in your blood, your blood gets thick and it can't just do what it needs to do. It just has to squeeze. Um, you know the heart is to squeeze it squeeze it hard to to push it through the vessels yeah yeah it's simple that's all that happens your blood's getting yeah. thick and sticky so do you think it's better that your blood is free flowing and oxygenated and and and, and free flowing or thick and sticky thick and sticky blood what's that going to cause mm, so it's going to put more pressure on the heart and on the vessels and yeah that's your, yeah, that's your heart sacs that's your strokes that's what's causing that so to keep your blood moving and oxygenated it's massive importance massive. Yeah. and i mean you spoke there too about the kind of the whole acid and alkaline like again you know and, and stress like we're going to have stress we're going to eat processed foods occasionally we're going to do all these things but again it's just the volume of it that we're doing now versus what we wore we'll say 30 40 years ago and again it's going back to that really simple thing our body's working too hard so we think yeah. okay what can i do to have my body not work so hard Okay, there's a couple of little things I can do every day and keep it properly hydrated and get more alkalinity into my diet. Alkalinity will balance out the over acidity. Mm, yeah, when, yeah. When you become overly acidic, and the early warning signs actually is one of the first warning signs of being overly acidic is poor sleep, um, low energy, poor sleep, low energy, and then kind of the more obvious ones is kind of maybe a bit of acid reflux and a few aches and pains and those kind of things. That's they're the early warning signs that your body's overly acidic. 
Well, yeah, and and there there is there's a lot of people that have um you know all those aches and pains and the, the arthritis and the the swelling of the joints and all that kind of thing, and the 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 acid reflux as you say, my husband suffers with that terrible, mm. and um yeah, and and the heat's an awful lot of acidic foods, but he's a lot of stress going on as well, so it's a mixture of his so whole needs, lifestyle as well. Yeah. Yeah, he needs more alkalinity in his life and that will actually just completely transform that. I mean, um, my husband as well had stomach ulcers. He used to have acid reflux all the time. And there was a survey done one time, actually. Uh, they asked supermarket owners, what was their, you know, like, what's your top seller, your biggest seller? 40 plus males and tassels. Oh, my God. That's fact. That is fact. Because wow. they're in there. Because, and it's because of lots of different things, but it's just our lifestyle and then the stress and then the rushing and the eating on the go and all of this and it's cause and all that. Very, very simple, very simple solution. Balance out the over acidity, get your body properly hydrated. It, it actually is, that's how simple it is. When, when you're taking antacids and stuff, it's not addressing the problem, it's only- A plaster. A yeah, yeah, it's only a plaster. It's like, it's only a Band-Aid. It's not actually sorting out the problem because, and then the longer that continues, unfortunately something else more serious is gonna manifest. Yeah. That you, want to, you might think, oh, there's only a bit of heartburn, but what's that going to, transpire into in another 10 years if it goes yeah. unchecked yeah, yeah and we need we need acid in the stomach to break down the oh, yeah. the meat and protein or whatever uh, yeah. there's certain food types and that we need the acid to actually break down that's that's really important um so tell me about um you know there's all different types of water and there's all different brands of water and there's the the brit filters and but tell me and you talked about acid as well so where is water in terms of on the ph scale so this the acid alkaline scale where where is water on that um it depends on where the water is coming from it depends yeah. on the source of the water that, that, yeah. that, that's the answer um i meet so many people every day in our business and they go but i drink sparkling water and you know at least like i don't like water i don't like tap water but at least if i buy sparkling water that's my kind of go-to and i'll drink a bottle or two of that every day sparkling water is highly acidic so if you're drinking sparkling water, you're adding to the um, acidic load mm. on your body or the, and then the, the oxidative stress damage on the body. Um, another water that's very acidic is, especially if you're buying the bottled water, is the um, ones with a touch of fruit. Not sparkling, mm. still, with a touch of fruit. That's chemicals, it's not fruit. That's more work for the body, but these are actually highly acidic. Oh um, the majority of tap waters, well waters, uh, are going to be neutral. Okay. The pH scales, so they're going to be neutral. Neutral still doesn't have the ability to balance out over acidity okay but a lot of tap waters uh mains waters are neutral because the council adds a chemical called lye to actually increase the ph so that it won't damp so it won't rust or damage your pipes so when you put your mains water through a brita filter for example a brita jug yeah well it takes out the nasties maybe like the chlorine and so on it actually, it actually also takes out this chemical and actually brita jugs leave the water clean but acidic so now you're getting hydration but you're adding to the acid Gotcha. Well, it's a real challenge. And then there's parts of, I know you're around um, Kildare, Wicklow area, and then especially up in Leitrim and Donegal, lots of pockets of the country where their well water is acidic because that's just, you know, maybe it's at a mountain source or whatever. And mm. the well water can be acidic and that's can be seen by rusting of the pipes and pinholes and copper and, you know, kind of green staining on sinks. So it's really common for water to be acidic or neutral. And something else I want to touch on uh, in relation to tap water. So tap water has lots of other bad nasties in there as well. Chlorine is one of them that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and chlorine obviously kills germs, right? That's what we know chlorine to do. We know chlorine in the, the swimming pools, right? All, all the, the chlorine. But when we drink that, we have our microbiome in our gut and our microbiome is vital for our overall health, for our immune system, for our sleep. It's really heavily connected to our sleep, having a good microbiome. But when you drink chlorine, chlorine kills germs. So it's gonna kill our good bacteria and our bad bacteria as well. So it's damaging yeah. our, our gut health, it's damaging our microbiome, the, the tap water. So that's something I discovered there only the last number of years. So a lot of people are not aware of that. Um, oh, John, it's massive. I always say, I have a very simple line, get a filter, don't be a filter. Do not drink tap water because your body has to go deal with that. You know, and it's just, as you say, it's designed, chlorine is designed to kill living organisms. Might we not be a living organism? I think we are a living organism. Mm. So it just it eats away at, you know, like it's just killing you slowly, but you're not gonna pick a glass of tap water and drop dead. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Over time, the effect on the body is just huge. And I think that's why people, um, like I've had people say to me, I always, I've always drank, drank tap water, never done me any harm, but it's over the time, as you say. Yeah, 
So 10 years later, it could be too late, you know? So, um, and, but then as you're sitting down with a cup of tea or something, they say, no, it hasn't done me any harm, but by the end of the conversation, they'll have listed maybe five ailments. You're going, yeah, yeah. It's actually connected. It's all connected. Yeah, it's yeah. Connected. yeah. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's, we, it's amazing how um, tolerant we've become of, like it's, like, it's okay to take Rennies. It's okay to have to pop a Nurofen. So it's actually not. You shouldn't have aches or pains. You shouldn't have to take painkillers. You shouldn't have to take sleeping tablets. You shouldn't have to, um, you know... Take any of these things. You really shouldn't. You know. I think we're very conditioned. Um, you know, and as I was listening to a podcast this morning, and somebody was saying that, um, you know, oh, by the time I'm fifty or sixty or whatever, uh, oh, some mother having a conversation with her daughter, and she was saying, by the time you're fifty or sixty, you'll be taking these tablets for arthritis or whatever. Like, you know, it's like it's a given. And I was like listening to this going what so we're already conditioned that we're going to be on tablets by the time we're, whatever the tablets are whatever you know it's kind of an association the older you get you're going to be on some tablet or something you know but that's, and it does become so accepted we see that we're out and about a lot and we're in our mid to late 40s my husband's 49 tomorrow and oh. like it, but there's no medication in this house but we're, we're in the house and people are in their 40s are on different types of medications maybe not the most serious ones in the world but it's they think, oh, that's that's okay. But what's, what are they going to be on in their fifties? What's the sixties going to look like? Mm. The time they're on in their seventies, it'll be a it'll be a medicine cabinet full of things. We need to address this now because we don't yeah. need to be on all this medication. We can we can we can get to the root. Yeah, and and water can really help to detoxify the body and yeah. and clear all this out, like you know as well. And um, yeah, it's absolutely vital. So we talked about acidity and alkaline. Um, I want to bring you to bottled water now. So a lot of people are drinking bottled waters um, and there's some bottled waters that would have more calcium in it or more sodium in it. Can you talk about the significance of that or, you know, can you drink too much bottled water? Can that uh, interfere with your, uh, your balance of your fluids in your body, you know, in terms of your electrolytes and that? Yeah, it can. And I suppose I'm a bit blanket when it comes to bottled water. I'm like, just don't buy it. I have to say I'm a bit blunt on that one. Just do not buy bottled water. It's the biggest scam of the 21st century. It's a complete waste of money. You're buying chemicals in a bottle. I don't care whether it's coming from the Evian source or it's coming from the River Rock source. Like, these are good sources of water. Mm. Fantastic mm. sources of water. But how they've been processed to sit in that plastic bottle and how long they can sit on a shelf and the shelf life of them and the BPA that's leaching, which is a known hormone disruptor. And I mean, you know, the amount of issues with fertility right now is just yeah. through the roof. And this BPA in plastic is a known hormone disruptor that's leaching into your, to your water. So actually, I, I just like, just don't drink bottled water. Drink the chemicals out of your tap. If you're going to drink chemicals, drink the free ones don't drink the, the ones you're going to pay for. That really is, I have a very strong opinion on that because I just yeah. think it's, it's, it's um, and then there's the environmental impact as well. It's huge. It's huge. Like if you just tap, just, just get a BPA free bottle and take it from your tap, preferably get some kind of filter on it if you can at all. I, that, that to me at a basic level, spend a few hundred euros and have a good basic filter that will take out the nasties out of yeah. your yeah. yeah and the, the bpa is a, is a big one as you yeah. say and um you know it's something that's what they say in 10 years time if we don't sort out this plastic problem and the pollution in the in the world uh it's going to take us a lot longer to to revert back um, and yeah. just seas and everything they're just full of plastic and it's killing all our our fish and everything else and um, so it is a massive problem and then the bpa in the plastic bottles and um i see people leaving bottles of water in their car and then they're drinking it but on a hot sunny day, it's when the, when the sun is shining in your car on a hot sunny day that that leaches even it's more into water. And I, but like even if you're buying it and you maybe be mindful not to put it in the hot sun, where has it been before it got to you? Yeah. Has it been in, on, in a warehouse or on a forecourt with the sun beating down on it or whatever? You've no idea where it's been. Um, you know, and there's confusion. And I and I get why people buy it because they kind of don't feel or they don't know their options. I suppose yeah. is the biggest thing. And yeah. we don't know your options, you can feel a bit cornered. And actually two things happen because of that, I've, I've, I've noticed in the years. People won by bottled water, but two, the biggest thing actually that happens as a result of people's confusion over water is they don't drink enough water. Yes, they're afraid to drink water, yeah. Right. Well, so they're kind of like, my tap is bad, I know that's bad. You know, um, bottled water, I know that's not good for you. And then people who are buying them, maybe they're heavy in and, you know, thinking, you know, they're spending a fortune. And then the plastic is niggling away in the back of their head because they're going, mm, this isn't good, look at plastic waste, and I know the mm -hmm. environmental impact. So there's a huge amount of confusion over the type yeah, of Yeah, absolutely. I want to talk about mental health, and you, were, you brought up mood there earlier on, so... Um, 
And water, again, uh, helps to clean out the system, helps with the digestion. And we know we talked about the microbiome and we do have that uh, gut brain connection, which, which um, you know, creates all those neurotransmitters that are, are related to um, our mood. Yeah. So again, clearing out and cleaning the body, detoxing the body, whatever word you want to call it, um, is absolutely vital when it comes to mental health. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about that, how water impacts that area? It's huge, actually. Um, when you're dehydrated, it just impacts every area. Okay, and as you say about the gut brain, and then just go even go back to just the brain being eighty percent water. Mm. So there's two things that are happening here. Dehydration just causes you know your whole body, every all of your organs are dehydrated. That just drops your mood completely, drops your mood, and it also makes you hungry, and yeah. it makes you cranky. Yeah, and you think that you're more hungry, but you're not hungry. You're actually dehydrated. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah and, and that's a lot of people yeah. and they say um you know if if you're so so when it comes to weight loss as well so um you know you're craving for all these foods so it will add to your piling on the pounds and, all, and that's a big thing that people are trying to do as well as lose weight at the moment it's, it's a very big thing and um when we when we drink the water it can aid in the weight loss and it can also uh, have us eat the right foods because we're not craving because as you say when we're craving we're, we're eating more when we could actually be thirsty or vice versa even. Um, so in terms of weight loss, I heard many times uh, before you eat, have a glass of water or in the middle of the day when you're not eating, have a glass of water and it will help to, to fill you up a little bit. And again, it could be just that you're dehydrated more than likely. Because it is, well, yeah, like it's most likely that you're just dehydrated. And, um, you know, I could go into all the science and all of this. I'm a bit of a nerd like that. I've got a sciencey brain, but I suppose I've learned in my business in the last number of years. I, in the early days, especially when I got more of the health side of water, yeah. I killed people with the science. Yeah. I did. Yeah. And it was like, blah, blah, blah. So it's like, I love to give this analogy. They were looking for a sip of water. I drowned them with a bucket of water. Ah, oh, lovely. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that was my analogy. So I'm really conscious. When you kind of start to say to me, kind of, if you go deeper, I'm like, mm, don't particularly want to because it actually just, look keep it simple you know yeah. this is yeah. actually you know and for the people who do like to research it's all out there go yeah. to google scholar actually i say to everybody go to google scholar for your research for your proper peer-reviewed research on yeah. why we'll say you know uh, dehydration affects the mood why it affects the brain why it affects your digestion you know why you swell up why it affects your all the peer-reviewed studies are there for everybody to view yeah so it's like things simple do you know what just get yourself hydrated because it affects all these things and that's all you need to know so you're going to just feel so much better when you're properly hydrated yeah and it's, and as you say the first thing if you go into hospital the first thing they do is is hook you up to the drip yeah and um, to get your high it's the first thing that you do and actually i had that um when i had morning sickness and i had oh god i forget the term but it was it was that severe hyperemesis i think it's called yeah Oh my God, I couldn't, I nearly couldn't even drink water. I was, I was very sick, but I was admitted into hospital and uh, I couldn't eat and I couldn't even drink. Right. And this was for two or three weeks solid. And I was only seven or eight weeks pregnant at the time. I hadn't even told a lot of people, you know, the way you normally wait for the three months. And they brought me into hospital. And the first thing they did was hook me up to the machine. And I'm not joking. You, I'm not joking. You. The next morning, now I was fainting and everything. Like I fainted when I went into the hospital. It was awful. But I remember waking up the next morning and they were pumping all the stuff into me. And the next morning I was hungry and I had a bowl of cornflakes. Yeah. Now I cried. I cried tears of joy because I could eat. And that's what it was dehydration. Dehydration. It's the root cause of everything. Oh because and, and you know what? I've had so many nutritionists say that to me over the years, actually, that has been the missing piece. Mm. We tend to give way too much attention to our food but at the end of the day if you're not properly absorbing digesting yeah. and eliminating they are the three yeah. most important things absorb yeah. digest and eliminate if you're not doing that if that's not happening you can put all the greens in the world into your system and what's going to happen to broccoli and spinach if you're not properly hydrated and you're not able to absorb and digest it it's going to turn into acidic waste yeah yeah you know? so you can eat a barrel load of broccoli but if you're not addressing your hydration properly, that broccoli is, I'm being a bit simplistic here, but that broccoli is turned into acidic waste. That acidic waste is now gets trapped in our body and we're holding on to it and now we're getting toxic. Makes so um, much sense. We're just getting overly acidic. And then the body goes, ah, 
what did I have to do to keep this person alive? And I better go and steal some alkaline minerals like her, you know, from her bones, her tissues and her muscles and her organs. Oh. And like that's your calcium, your sodium, your potassium and your magnesium. And your, your body basically starts to rob from itself. And then we start to break down. Now, that's a very important point that you mentioned, because it's not so it's only something that I came across in the last number of years with the acidic environment in the body. Um, your body, because your, your body's very forgiving and your body knows what to do. Your body is very intelligent at keeping you alive. Right. So it takes all the extra mineral and minerals are alkaline. So it takes the minerals from your bones yeah. when your your gut is acidic. Yeah. And then we have this bone density problem thing and arthritis and osteoporosis and all that other sort of stuff as well. Yeah. So. That's a really important um, point. Yeah. Something else I want to ask you. Sorry, did you want to say something else there? Oh, that? I'm basically saying, again, a simple way to look at that is we're just breaking down then because our body has to work too hard. As you say, our body is very forgiving. If mm. you go so far and then well, someday it'll just like, literally, it'll be like, it's just going to throw its hands in the air and go, I can't do this anymore for this person because mm. they're not giving me nothing. I'm going to have to do all the work here and then it becomes exhausted and it yeah. hasn't got any more minerals to rub and you've depleted yeah. your body and then breakdown happens. So because incredible. Keep yourself balanced. That's the, that's the key. It's the so secret. incredible. Should we drink water with our dinner when we're eating our main meals? Should we drink, should we drink water? No. no. Okay. And it's a habit. And again, it's a habit. And when I learned that years ago, and we tried to alter that habit in our family, oh my God, the, 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 the tantrums at dinner time. I said, look, you know, I used to give them down a tiny drop. But after a few months, and it did take months, I'll be honest with you, it took months to change that mm. habit. Because we're used to having water on our table. You go into a restaurant, you get water on the table. Um, you shouldn't drink water with your um, food, if you can help it at all. If it's a habit you have, just try and ease yourself off it over time. Now, actually, okay, it, it, it's okay to drink wine, believe it or not, because wine actually helps with your digestion. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody to drink wine with their breakfast or anything, but just... <laughs> <laughs> or maybe save for it last for the for the dinner but no it's um it just doesn't like it just slows down the whole digestion process you know? okay brilliant brilliant and um talk to me about uh, so we should drink what way should we drink water should we drink in a, a ice cold room temperature any preferred way room temperature, room temperature and again you know you could go into the real science behind that but look the, the bottom line is your body doesn't have to work so hard then to actually utilize the water where it needs to perfect it needs to go when you drink it cold the body kind of goes into a bit of shock and then it has oh. to go oh, and then your body actually has to go to work to adjust the temperature of the water before it can utilize the water it's probably yeah. the way to put it so look at if you're again if you're a huge fan of just having the water in the fridge or putting ice in your water whatever it is just wean yourself off that and even think god well like if i could just have a few glasses at room temperature a day you know and just Perfect, because that's the, the the preferred environment for the body, and it, it utilizes and the metallic or metabolic process of the, the whole digestion of food, as you say, a lot easier. Yeah. So we talked about weight loss, we talked about skin, digestion, aging, um, uh, what else we talked the nervous system, um, the dehydration in terms of uh, fatigue. So we talked about a lot of things. So, um, so I want to talk about the products that you have that you are um, that you that you're providing for people tell us a little bit about the, the water system the, the filtration system that you are currently using at the moment okay well look as i said earlier i'm we work very specifically with water ionizers as i said i used to be in the water filtration business so i'm very familiar with all different types of water filtration we've had filtered water we're very i feel very blessed that we i suppose had this that we have not drank um you know uh, contaminated tap water with chlorine and so on for ever um, mm. You know, even for showering, we've always had our, our the chlorine removed from the shower water because our skin absorbs all that chlorine as well. Lucky suckers. So, yeah, we are lucky suckers. <laughs> and I am telling you something here now. I have three kids from 16 down to 10 who have never had an antibiotic. And I genuinely believe it's because the chemical load on their body just was, has always been controlled and they've always been hydrated. Yeah. You know, look, maybe there's a bit of luck in there, a bit of genetics. I don't know. But anyway, look, at, uh, I'm very proud of that for them because I know their health is strong and their health mm. is good. Um, so filtering your water, as I just say, if my product or what we do isn't for you or you kind of doesn't make sense to you, I always say to everybody, come and talk to me. I'll give you the best independent advice on the right water filter to have. So as I said, don't be a filter, get a filter. That's a really simple basic level. But if you want to take your water to a whole other level, this yeah. is why um, I moved away from what I was doing. And now for the last four years, four and a half years, myself and my husband, this is all we do. We basically go out and educate people on that whole acid alkaline balance and what you need to do. And again, it's not about just 
you know, we're very heart led with this, to be honest with you. We want to help people. That's mm -hmm. our genuinely our core. So if it's getting the filter and moving from sparkling water and, in, in, and introducing some more greens into your diet, that's huge. That in itself, without touching the product we have, will actually make a big difference in your life. But if you want to make it even simpler and take it to, to another level, you'll have you'll drink a water that's highly alkaline to balance your over acidity. Mm -hmm. The water from our machines is a very powerful antioxidant. OK, to, and I, I don't again, don't want to go too much into that today, but our water has a voltage. So your tap water, your bottled water, your well water, all of these are dead. Yeah. So they've got no energy. OK, and that adds actually to the oxidative stress damage on the body. When you drink a water that's alive and has a negative charge and is electrically charged, that actually detoxes you, to go back to that word again, at a cellular level. Now, you will not and you cannot experience that with tap or bottled water. It's not possible to experience. So when you talk about that waste that's trapped inside us, this type of water just flushes the body so easily. So you're bringing that balance back to the body. You're taking the workload off the engine of the body as such by making a really simple switch to drinking a water that's alkalized and energized. And for me, I just wear nuts about it because it's, it's, it's the simplicity. I'm all about the simplicity. I'm drinking water already, drink this type. Now you're going to balance your over acidity. So say the likes of your husband, that's acid reflux gone. I know that because my own husband and we meet loads of people, gout, gone. Wow. And it's not the water that's doing it. That's why I always say to people, we're not claiming that this water is a miracle water by any stretch of the imagination. All it's doing is everything that we mentioned in the last half hour, it's bringing the body back into balance. Yeah. And now when the body's not under so much pressure, now it can go to work healing instead of keeping your life. That's the key, isn't it? It's the yeah, key it's healing, bringing the, the body into balance because exactly. the body always wants to heal. Like it's, it's, you know, like it was leaching stuff that from the minerals in your bones and all that. So it's your body is so intelligent. It's all, always trying to heal. So when you have your body in perfect balance, it yeah. can heal anything else that's going on in the body. So your water can help. So people say to me, oh, is the water good for this? Is the water good for blood pressure? Is it good for constipation? It, it's not that the water is good. Yes, the water is the same way as broccoli is or everything else. Oh. But you're, you're, you're just addressing three very simple things. You're, you're, you're addressing hydration. It's six yeah. times more hydrating. So you're going to be properly hydrated and feel hydrated for the first time in your life when you drink this water. So then what happens is your sleep improves and your energy goes up. That's, your, that's the first thing that happens. And then as you're drinking it over time, your body is just getting more and more into balance. And then you notice little things like, Oh, I'm not constipated anymore. Jeez, that pain I had in my elbow. That's kind of gone. So as time goes on, you're just noticing all these things changing yeah. in your body. And it's because your body is just going, oh, thank God, this one has given me a chance to go and do what I need to do now. I mean, we're designed by the creator to heal ourselves. Oh, yeah. We're just not allowing ourselves to do it. And mm. I'm all about finding simple ways you can do that. Yeah, that's yeah, oh, that's that's brilliant. Yeah, that's brilliant. yeah, yeah. really, it just makes so much sense. What's the name of the product, Kangen? Uh, yes, Kangen Water. Kangen uh, it's a Japanese okay. company. It's um, look at this is a bit of kit. These machines are from sixteen hundred euros up to three and a half thousand euros. Um, I bring this in straight away because I suppose one, I'm really proud of the product. I know it's built to a ridiculously high standard yeah. and manufactured under medical equipment manufacturing license. So this is not. Um, yeah, the originator is from Japan and he used yeah. it in the hospitals, isn't that right? And he actually yeah. uses it for sanitizing and all that, doesn't he, the water? Because you can... Yeah. These originate, this is not newfangled. Most people are going, how come I haven't heard about this? This is not new. This is, our company is 46 years old. Water ionizers have been used in hospitals in Japan since the late 50s. Um, so not only do we have the best drinking water that supports and balances out our, our health and well-being, we can go chemical free in our home at the touch of a button because the machine actually produces uh, a water that's a natural degreaser and a natural hypochlorous acid. So we're that's incredible. So we're eliminating all those other nasty mm -hmm. smells and, and chemicals that we're cleaning things that we yeah. can just use this water at this different acidic level that's you just press the button as you say and it produces the right water for for cleaning and disinfecting like right down to disinfectant kind of level as well that's just incredible that really is incredible just allowing our system to be able to like we spoke about earlier just be able to detox itself and and, and flush out the nasty so i always say to people it's not a water filter it, you know it's another level up from that it does contain a filter because it has to take out the nasties yeah and, you know um but the process actually just completely restructures your water again google scholar i'm a huge you know if andy wants to do the research google scholar and electrolyzed reduced water and you will get again all the studies to, to 
that. So it's just amazing. Brilliant, brilliant. Amazing. So we're coming to the end. So where can people find you? Have you got a website? Yeah, um, our website is Kangen Life, K A N G E N Life, L I F E dot I E. Um, that's our kind of our general uh, overview website. When you go down to the bottom of that, you'll see um, you can go then links to our eco website or to our commercial. Um, we also have a Ucon turmeric supplement, an amazing spa shower system. So you can get links to different um, websites, uh, you know, connected to that at the bottom of that. And look, there's a newsletter there. You know, sign up if they that. want more information, <laughs> if, if they want more yeah. in-depth stuff. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So listen, so thanks a million, Adeline, for your time. And uh, we went through so much there from weight loss, digestion, your skin, anti-aging, detoxing the body, helping the body come back into balance. So water is vital for life. Mm. And it's really vital that we have the right type of water and clean, alive water, as you say, as well. So Adeline, thanks a million for your time. Thank you for having me on. I just really loved it. Thank you so much. Right. Now, I really enjoyed the chat and, and it's a very vital uh, area as well to, to have a conversation around. So thank you again and we will talk to you soon. Thanks a million, Joanne. Take care. Keep up the great work. <laughs> thanks.